This is a compact 1.21 kelp smelter, and this is a 1.21 bamboo super smelter mob farm. You probably heard all about how kelp is going to dethrone bamboo as the best super smelter fuel going forward. In fact, about three quarters of you thought this way on my recent poll. But I'm about to tell you why bamboo will still come out on top for a majority of players going forward. And this is for reasons that you probably haven't thought of yet. So let's go over the basics as to why this is. So to understand how kelp farming works, we need to go and take a look at the actual growth mechanics of kelp itself. So the general process is we smelt nine kelp, then we take that dried kelp and craft it into a block, and then that dried kelp block will smelt 20 blocks. So that means our net gain is 11 smelted items per nine kelp that we farm, or the original number of kelp farmed per hour times 11 ninths equals the number of smelted items we can make per hour. So because one furnace makes 360 items smelted every hour, that means we'll get 360 dried kelp per hour with one furnace that is smelting the kelp into dried kelp. And so because each plant grows around 7.5 kelp per hour, that means we need 48 total kelp plants for the furnace array to continuously dry the kelp, which equates to around 16 blocks of dried kelp blocks per hour, or about 320 smelted blocks per hour. And if we did use a smoker, we could double this rate, but we would need twice as many kelp. So this array right here is built around the furnace instead of the smoker, just so that it's a little bit more compact and a little bit easier to demonstrate for you guys. So what we have going on here is this kelp is growing up right here and is going into these observers, of which there's a few of them to save us a little bit of blocks. Oh, looks like I forgot this other observer right here. So what's happening is the kelp will grow up and it will trigger this observer and then the observer will activate the whole row of pistons behind it. And then that kelp will then float up into this water stream, which will push it sideways into the center where we have a little item collection stream that is pushing right here into this hopper. As you can see, every now and then the entities will float if they're stuck just below this row of pistons. This is because the piston pushes out the water source and it'll float down. But the thing is, whenever the kelp grows back up into that slot, it'll turn into a full water source again and those kelps will float up. So there's a good chance that they'll float up before they'll despawn. And this hopper is pushing into this furnace, which is facing the other way, and it is using the dried kelp from the farm to smelt the kelp itself that's coming in. And so then after this kelp is being smelted in this furnace, the dried kelp is going into this hopper, which is pushing into this crafter right here that you can see. And that is filling up slowly over time and will make the dried kelp block when it is completed. And so whenever that crafter crafts the dried kelp block, it'll push it into this dropper, which is facing upwards, as is this dropper right here. And all this is being powered by this observer clock that is running right here. And that's powering the crafter and this dropper and the dropper above it. And so then that block of dried kelp will be pushed into this hopper, which will then push into this hopper. And as you can see, this hopper will prioritize the hopper underneath it, which is pushing into the original furnace array where you get these dried kelp blocks. And the hopper behind it, we have some filler items just so that you wouldn't have to fill this all up with dried kelp blocks. And then once this is full on top of this, it'll be pushed into this furnace array right here. And this will make about 320 items per hour, so it is under the limit of how fast one furnace can continuously smelt. So you can make a really simple array and put your smelted items into here, and then have your output chest down here. But the problem is, you want to be able to smelt items a lot faster than just 320 per hour. Like, that's, that's not super fast. So this is where we run into the big problem of using kelp as fuel. And the problem is that kelp blocks smelt 20 items each, and this is a really big chunk of items. So if you were to make a very simplistic super smelter array here, you could put your smelted items into this cart and then send it on its way and it would deliver them, you know, something simple like this. So then if you had your dried kelp block production being put into this chest, say you get, you know, a stack of them and then you want to smelt some items, right? So this will deliver exactly two kelp blocks to each furnace right here. So that means that once you activate the first dried kelp block in each of these furnaces, we're gonna need to smell about 320 items to, in order to not waste any of that fuel, which is about five stacks. So if you're not smelting fuel in discrete chunks of five stacks per time you use this, then it will just be wasting the items smelted and that kelp block will just be burning in there and not be smelting anything and wasting all of this precious fuel. And this is just for the 16 times furnace array. It actually gets even worse for a 64 super smelter, which if you've ever used one, it's almost impossible to go back because they're so nice. So for 64 furnaces, you'd have to be smelting 20 stacks at a time in order to not waste fuel every time you smelt. And this is a big problem because most of the time we like items quickly. We don't really care about the long-term production and efficiency of fuel. You wanna get your stuff smelted fast, like in a 64 super smelter where you can smelt around a stack of items in 30 seconds. I'm sure some people would be perfectly happy with this setup where they can just toss items in here and come back to it later and not have to worry about it. But the thing is, if you wanna scale up and have any kind of actual super smelter, then kelp is not gonna be 
be good for this. Except in the very extreme scenario where you build a giant farm of kelp to where you have just so much of it, you don't even care that you're wasting, you know, 10 blocks smelted every time you use it. But those big machines make a lot of lag and most players are not gonna be making those giant contraptions that smelt thousands of items of kelp. So we need a better solution for most players. And so we enter the new age of bamboo farming. So what I have here is a traditional mob farm of which we are using the bones from the skeleton to actually produce the bamboo that we need via this dispenser right back here. So what we're doing is we're sorting the bones out first. So if I were to simulate some bones being put into this, we can see that they're being crafted into bone meal by this crafter, which is in turn being dispensed onto the bamboo, which is being picked up and fed into this array to craft it into planks. And we have one little observer clock here, once again powering this production and also the crafters down below, which you can see back here a little bit better. So this crafter is making the bamboo into blocks of bamboo, and this crafter is making the blocks of bamboo into two planks. So this means that we get for every nine bamboo, we're going to be getting two planks made. This is more efficient because nine bamboo can smelt exactly two and one quarter items and two bamboo planks can smelt three items. So we're getting a little bit of an efficiency boost here. And also whenever one bamboo plank hits a furnace, it can actually smell any existing items in the furnace instead of being wasted like a normal bamboo would because it only smells one quarter item. So we're getting an efficiency boost and a fuel that won't break the farm if it runs out of fuel. And we're using a crafter with a comparator signal in order to get the right amount of these carts, which is three ticks of the crafter. So it's a little hard to showcase, but when this cart gets a certain amount of items, it will go and deposit them into these chests and it'll have enough to get an even amount in each of them. And so once this cart gets the correct amount of items, it'll be sent out and go back and deposit a few into each of these chests right here. And then we're using a smart rail system so that whenever these chests have enough items in them, we'll be able to send a cart underneath. This cart will be traveling in the slow water stream to pick up exactly one stack. So then this cart full of bamboo planks will go into this storage system right here and deliver exactly one to each of the fuel furnaces. And then once it is completely done, it will go into here to check and see if it has any more items. And if it did, it would deposit them into where this cart is initially delivering them. We don't want the cart to fill up because of a strange system where I have to deposit one item over here. It's kind of weird. Hey, this is post editing potato. Just wanting to say something real quick in here. Since because we have the system where the cart drops off any extra items after it's gone through the smelter, we actually don't need that initial system with the detector rail over here. So just disregard that bit. So if you're familiar with my channel, you'll probably recognize this design as from my bamboo farm super smelter. However, this design is going to completely phase this out going forward as this is much better and also completely foolproof for if the farm fills up. And real quick, if you wanted to lock all these hoppers when you're not using the farm to decrease lag, you can make a row of blocks right under here and power each of these with a torch underneath or something similar. And that would lock all of these hoppers and make it a little bit less laggy for your world if that is what interests you. And that was supposed to be a chest minecart right there. So if we wanted to smelt a bunch of items, we can go ahead and just toss them in here, which will send the cart on its way, deliver exactly one to each furnace. And as we can see, these are all activating. And we'll just go ahead and let the cart travel on its way. As you can see, we get every single item into each of these and they're going to come in here and it takes just over 30 seconds to smell a whole stack in here and it gets a little bit more efficient if you were to do nine stacks that's about two minutes to smell all these and there we go and you don't actually need this inner chest right here or this chest this is just for if you wanted to dump your inventory so that you could dump a lot of items into here at once you could do that so this farm also draws upon bamboo reserves stored in all these chests and there's enough bamboo planks right here to smelt over 60,000 items whenever it's completely full. But if you're AFKing above, the farm will make enough bamboo planks to smelt about 33 stacks every hour. And if you do run out of fuel while smelting items, you can just get more fuel in and it'll work perfectly fine just the same way. And in addition to all this, we have the normal draws for the mob farm that are over here as well. So I'm burning the rotten flesh right here because nobody wants that. But we have all the other drops, which are string, arrows, gunpowder, and then all the witch drops down here, which you can see. And where this gets really crazy is that you could build a sugarcane farm right here and automate rocket production with all the gunpowder. And in addition to that, you could craft the string into wool and carpet blocks. This means that you could use this setup to get more than a dozen unique items and even more if you add a sugarcane farm, plus a super smelter that can smelt tons of items every hour. And all of that to me is much better than what a kelp farm of comparable size can do. 
So real quick before I go, I'd like to talk about some of the improvements I made to this traditional mob farm. So I actually got this idea from a pixel wrist video about using the hoppers underneath with a chest boat. And what this is doing is a very clever way of making sure that the number of unique items never gets in the way of the actual flow of the total number of items from the mob's farm. Basically, it makes it where you don't need more hoppers, which is good. Once they go down from here, they're going straight into the sorting system. And this is the impulse item sorter back here. So this is a little collection system with a fence around the outside and a few blocks to prevent uh, random items from floating onto where the super smelter is going to be. And what the fence does is that occasionally a zombie will spawn with feather falling boots on or a skeleton and it'll try and walk around. This just keeps it in here and prevents it from going and messing stuff up over here. So up here, the water flow in this collection system is incredibly easy to build and also place. We just have a two tall system with water along the top of all these shapes right here. And this is perfectly aligned to where no mobs will get on here. And the water is perfectly placed so that the water on here will go exactly one block over, which will help push all the mobs directly into the center and be above the hoppers more. The flushing system is exactly the same on all pretty much all the mob farms that you've seen. Big shout out to Ginembon for making this design originally. However, we have a custom boat clock up here that is just really cool. So the concept of boat clocks is not something that I originally came up with. I've seen a few very rarely that people have used for timing circuits on things. However, this one right here is my original design. So I would like to apologize if anybody came up with this first, but I was messing around with these and this is by far the best solution I came up with for this particular timing circuit. So if you can see the hitbox of the boat is moving around in this water stream right here. And what that's doing is powering the dropper that is directly under this pressure plate. And while that is powered, it is actually flushing the water of the farm. And whenever it is unpowered and the boat is anywhere else, it is completely unpowering that, which is leaving the farm open. As we can see, the boat just hit the pressure plate and then the water starts flushing. This is really good because it has a very slightly shorter window when it is on the pressure plate to when it is off the pressure plate. Basically, it means that the water flushing is a little bit more efficient because the water doesn't stay on the farms quite as long. And that means that there's a little bit more time for monsters to spawn and a little bit less time that the water's there to flush them off. So this actually improves efficiency just a little bit. And if we ever want to turn this off, we just power this piston right here, which is really simple. And we'll stop the farm whenever the boat gets right back here. Bam. So the farm is stopped. If you want to stop the farm for some reason, whenever mobs can spawn, you can still do that right now. So if you just push it right here, then the boat will sit and then there won't be any water on any of these platforms. And I've tested this a lot and it will never break if the boat is even right here in between the bamboo and the piston, it'll still be working fine. So yeah, let me guys know what you think about this. I'm Honestly, this is the best thing ever to me and I really enjoyed the aesthetics of this. So I actually came out with a design for a very simplistic mob farm a while back. I'm not using that one here just because it would be hard to build in the air for this particular setup. However, you could use this boat clock for my original mob farm and it would actually work perfectly and would be much cheaper than the clock I had for that farm. So in summary, that's why I think bamboo is still going to be king for super smelters going forward. Let me know what you guys think of this design and what you think of the kelp. I'm actually not going to be posting a tutorial of any of these designs just because no one is really playing on 1.21 yet except for people experimenting with things. So once 1.21 comes out, I'll do some tutorials over these farms and I'm really excited for those. So let me know what you guys think about these setups and what you'd like to see in 1.21 going forward. It's been really fun making new stuff with all these auto crafters and there's definitely more planned for the future. A lot of you have been commenting on my die farm to make it auto crafting as well. And believe me, that is on my list. And one more quick announcement. I just opened my own Discord server called Spud Central, where you can join and talk about my farms and Redstone in general. So if you like my videos and just want to hang out and talk about Redstone stuff, just come by the Discord and say hi. So I don't think I've mentioned it in a video yet, but thanks to all you guys for helping me get over 1,000 subscribers. This is really exciting for a new channel, so thanks to all you guys for that. So that covers about everything for today. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next video.